Good everybody. Thanks a lot for coming along. So this is the second session uh, of the HPC Carpentry Breakout today. Uh, we had our first one this morning and we had about like 15 or 16 people there. It looks like we have a similar amount here now and um, it's really good. It's great to see lots of people here and you're all very welcome. Uh, first thing I wanted to do was um, actually give it over to to, to, so one thing was the first thing to mention is that our, our um, code of conduct facilitator and uh, he's just going to briefly introduce himself and mention what uh, what the facilitator does. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Luca Mani. I'll be the code of conduct facilitator for this meeting. Um, so if you in any discussion you feel that you are being discriminated or uh, there is some use of vulgar language um, you are, you, uh, I request you to contact me um, and uh, I will see to it that it uh, goes the right way. So, could it be? Great. Thank you. And while I'm saying thank you to people, I'd like to thank the Carpentries um, for giving us the opportunity to host this session. Uh, it's been actually a great little motivator. So, so nothing like having an event coming up to, to give people a little bit of an extra boost. We've had a lot of activity in the last couple of weeks in, in, in the HBC Carpentry repos. So that's been really good to see. So I think it's been like, even just for that, it's been a great idea to have this session. And we're very grateful for hosting it. And I know it's probably been a lot of effort to move everything online. So we really appreciate that extra effort that's gone in here. Um, I'd also like to thank all the people who've contributed to HVC Carpentry so far, and particularly in the last few weeks and with the organization at this session as well. And um, what else did I want to say? Uh, oh yeah, so the Etherpad. Um, we've tried to put everything you might need into the Etherpad. You should be able to see that on my screen now. So hopefully the session and how it's organized is pretty clear from there. Um, we will start with some with just a little introduction from Peter about uh, the history of HBC Carpentry, and what, what's been happening since the last uh, Carpentry Con event back in Dublin two years ago. And then we'll have some lightning presentations um, from a few, uh, few speakers who were kind enough to offer to do that for us. And after that, then we'll have some breakout sessions. And there's three themes in the breakout sessions. So we'll randomly divide people up into the different rooms. Um, there's one room about the motivation about why people might be interested in the HPC carpentry in general. And then another room about the community and how to foster that community and what might get in the way uh, of us ma making this a really successful effort. And then the last one is about the content. So what things should actually be covered through HPC carpentry? So where do we define our limits? And then after that, we'll have, uh, there's, a, there's a chair in each of the breakout rooms and they'll come back and report to the main room about what was discussed in each of those breakout sessions. Then finally, we'll have some wrap up. We'll talk about some next steps and about how to get, stay connected to each other. Um, the one thing I would ask uh, before we really get started is, is that there's a poll that we've created, which is the idea of which is to help guide the sessions or influence the sessions a little bit later on. Um, so that poll, the link is in the etherpad here and we'll put it in the chat as well. That poll just has a couple of very simple questions. It asks you to roughly classify yourself uh, in, in some very broad categories. Then it asks why are you keen to get involved in the carpentries and there's always space here to add another option if you feel that these ones don't really cover um, your, your particular case. Um, what value do you see in that community? What kind of barriers do you see? And then the final one is what should we cover? Um, so there's a small list of options here but if you have other ideas I would really recommend, I really hope that you would add those as another potential option here as well. So if people could please um, follow the link to that survey and fill that out, I will close that in about 15 minutes or so, and then I'll put, push the results into a document that, that will be shared with people, and you'll be able to take a look at that as well to see the results. So you, have about, well, you can start doing it now, hopefully it doesn't take too long, um, but you can finish it any time in the next 15 minutes, and then I'll close that poll, and we'll, I'll transfer over the results. Um, so without further ado, I give it over to Peter to talk about a little bit about the recent history of HPC Carpentry. Cool, thanks. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll stop your share and 
stop mine. There we are. Okay, so the link to my slide deck is also contained in the etherpad. So feel free to open that in your browser if you want to. Um, I'll, I'll flip through the, the slides through the um, share. So, so thanks again also from my side for joining. Um, I'll put together a couple of slides that I hope can bring everybody up to the same level or, <clears throat> or at least give you an uh, insight into what the HPC Carpentry uh, folks have been up to recently. Um, so what happened so far? Um, so prior to CarpentryCon 2018 in Dublin, um, there was basically um, a lot of materials potentially even out there, but two I want to mention was the Compute Canada um, uh, created a, a team dubbed HPC Carpentry on GitHub and they um, set up their infrastructure uh, bootstrap from the Carpentry lessons already back then and conceived four main lessons, HPC Intro, HPC Shell, Python and uh, HPC Chapel, whereby HPC Intro was more uh, introduction to the scheduler. So, so the basics of a scheduler, HPC Shell was more a focused as um, lesson material on an introduction to the Unix shell. HPC Python co included introduction to Python and workflow management with SnakeMake. And HPC Chapel, as the name suggests, by the means of this programming language, was uh, focusing on parallelization. And I also conceived a um, carpentry inspired material that I called HPC Midday. Now, at CarpentryCon, in Dublin, a lot of people got together and we uh, evidently saw that there was quite some interest uh, from multitude of people um, in, this, in this topic. And uh, so here's a pictorial impression <laughs> from, the, uh, from the coffee break that actually shows a couple of people that are also dialed in here. And basically, so there, the amount of people that dialed in or, or came by and expressed their interest and, and contributed were from HPC centers also, some were playing RSEs or were even um, working for cloud providers. And of course, um, there were a, a lot of scientists and, and PIs that have basically using HPC as their main tool to do science. Um, for example, we had a workshop that defined the learner profiles that we still have in our repos and that um, steered somewhat the um, pace of actions for HPC intro. And what we basically decided after a while at CarpentryCon was to stick with the HPC Carpentry team and potentially merge parts of HPC in a day into that if that is needed. Um, yeah, and what happened after that was a big random walk. Um, so this is this image is taken from Wikipedia. Um, basically, um, we tried to um, create a community around this material. And for example, I also uh, committed a couple of mistakes um, uh, trying to con uh, motivate people. And uh, I was, for example, over, too, over uh, pedantic with some PRs and that basically created uh, potentially or motivated people to fork off and, and develop their own materials. Um, Right, uh, so uh, how about the present then? Um, since the last month, roughly, um, converging towards CarpentryCon at home, um, we have seen quite an increased commitment. So here's the uh, commitment pulse from HPC Intro, and you see there uh, in 2020, prior to this meeting, um, you see quite a spike of commits um, to the main branch of this uh, repo. Going further, um, so here are the individuals um, that actually um, carry the big part of bringing um, our um, material up to speed and contributing large improvements, ranging from um, fixing typos, uh, fixing the infrastructure inside the repo, but even, and that's actually the biggest thing in the recent days, converging towards a carpentry theme that allows internationalization so that we potentially can even um, to work towards uh, uh, translations. So the individuals that are also uh, locked into this session is Trevor, uh, Callard and Matt Gill, uh, Mark Miller, Alan, um, David from London, the Duomas from London, I think as well, Francois, myself and Andy Turner. Um, and I hope that we can continue or expand this list in due course. Um, so our proposal also to this community is as follows. Um, our goal would be to bring HPC carpentry on and mostly um, focusing on HPC intro into the carpentries by beginning of 2021. 
And for this, we propose to create, first of all, a task force um, where we collect volunteers that um, work towards this uh, well-defined um, goal. What we also want to do is nominate GitHub managers so that the work that uh, is required to review and um, uh, guide incoming PRs is also leveled on many shoulders. And third of all, that we want to organize weekly co-working hours so that the community has a, a repeating uh, venue where they can connect and really exchange face-to-face -face, um, where things are going, where people have trouble, where they need help. Um, yeah, so that's, that's our suggestion going forward. Good, that's it. Okay, thanks, Peter. Um, any questions or anything like that from Peter before we move on to the lightning talks? I don't see anything in front of me, so or no hands up at least. Um, so let's move on to the lightning talks. Uh, the first one up is Elizabeth Wicks. She's been very kindly agreed to come on behalf of the Carpentries Executive Council to talk to us a little bit, which is, we really appreciate. So we especially appreciate um, supportive words. Right, so uh, Elizabeth, if you're there. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I Hi. moved my monitor so my mouse is in the wrong place. Um, yeah, I'm, I have been only peripherally involved in HPC, uh, working with people who do more HPC carpentry types of things. So I'm excited to sit in and listen and learn about um, how you all are organizing. And, and it's exciting to see the, your interest and plans for becoming a lesson program within the, the carpentries as a whole. Um, I am on the executive council. This is my third year in the executive council and this year I'm chair. Um, so this is, it's important to us to see the community coming together in these kinds of ways, because that's what we need from you. Um, to become a lesson program, there's, there's documentation in the handbook as far as what we need from you um, to come to us with, um, but it needs to be ongoing. Um, it can't be sort of dropped off. It has to get to arrive with energy, not um, necessarily finish the work but when you become a lesson program. So uh, we're all so sort of new in getting, we've, we've adopted library carpentry um, as well. And that's like our first real le lesson program that we absorbed in after the merger. And so um, I love seeing the organization and the energy and just the number of people in here. Um, but it's hard work and um, the hardest work is sometimes just getting a ton of people with energy in the same Zoom call um, and scheduling. It's also really hard. So you're doing the hard work and it's awesome to see that there's so much energy and excitement and interest in, the, in this lesson program. Um, and so getting people into the right places, getting the lessons into the right places, we're really excited to see that happen and uh, I know this is a need um, in so many different ways uh, around the research community. So uh, I'm just here to listen and learn. I can't stay for the breakouts, I don't think, but um, uh, I'm happy to see so much commitment and planning coming from this organization or coming from this, this group of people. And I'm excited to see what you come up with uh, for your lesson program proposals. Great, thanks very much. Um, is there any questions or, or comments or from anyone for maybe towards the executive council as well? So in general. So I have a question if I may. Yeah. Um, so how is the new uh, approach when incorporating new material? Like if somebody comes up with a set of new suggestions, um, how, how easy it is to get into the carpenters? So there's a couple different ways. Um, the core team is probably a better uh, group to answer this question with more um, specifics. There's the lesson incubator program um, and which can take lessons and sort of adopt them into things. Um, lesson programs and under the umbrella of the Carpentries isn't just about creating materials. It's also about having the community behind them to teach them. So it's not just about like finishing up and making this awesome set of materials inside of GitHub. Um, if you don't have the instructors and the training and the pipeline and governance to facilitate that, um, uh, let me get the link in here, to facilitate that stuff getting taught 
um, for the carpentries, uh, that can't happen. Um, so it's not just about creating a lesson and gifting it to us. Um, it's sort of like a free puppy, right? Like um, you can't, lessons require constant uh, updating. They have p people to handle PRs. Uh, I sent that link to you privately, Conrad, instead of to the, the, the main chat, hold on. Um, it, it's got a, it, it, a lesson program is more than the lessons. It's the community. It's the people behind it. People who can teach it, the people who can keep it up to date, they can keep it relevant. I know HPC is an area of constant change. And so if you don't have the commitment to keep it up to date in the long term, um, it's not a sustainable effort in there. So the ease, it, that's a really difficult question to answer because it depends on the community behind the lesson and not just the lesson itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, anyone else have any comments or, or questions? If if not, then I mean I think that's something we have to take on board a little bit, and I know that that's a difficult one to reply to, right? Because it somehow implies some commitments that we would struggle perhaps to give or people I, like you know, right? Everyone here is a volunteer, and so talking about the future. And committing to doing stuff into the future for a long period of time is a difficult thing to do right as volunteers but i think it's something we need to talk about and hopefully there are avenues open to us that might support us to do that it's also about the onboarding too right it's not just about the current volunteers it's about onboarding people into the community to achieve that sustainability as well so it doesn't have to be just all of you in this room it's mm -hmm. your up-and-coming students as well that can take their turn Mm -hmm. Anyhow, <laughs> this is the hardest work, right? The hard part is not creating the lessons. You think the hard part is creating the lessons, it's not. Yeah. Okay, if there's, if there's no more comments or questions or something, then we can go on to the next um, presentation. Sabri, this is you. This is about the um, code refinery, about a group in the, in the Nordic countries and, and the next level of carpentries that they've engaged on there. Sabri, over to you. Thank you, Alan. Um, I'm Sabri. I work at the University of Oslo with uh, HPC. Um, and I would like to first thank Alan and uh, others and for uh, Peter, Peter and others for initiating this and sort of giving uh, uh, reinitiation. So it was something we were very waiting for a long time. Uh, and thank you, everybody involved. And uh, for my talk, I got an excellent entry point uh, with, uh, with the term uh, gifting puppy dog or some, 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 something was said before, like, you know, that's how, that's, that's a way to explain the code refinery. Code refinery was started independently without, uh, not, not an affiliation to carpentries, uh, but then uh, carpentry style and pedagogy was uh, adopted. Um, and then um, it's, it's not really like a split off of carpentries, but it's a uh, independent effort sort of developing this material and sort of uh, know-how and teaching experience um, independent of carpentries but in the future we expect that it might be absorbed into carpentries at some point uh, so why we need this uh, we, we need it for a um, as a next level for carpentries uh, i have the, the slides some with them examples in the etherpad uh, so for example we have the uh, git lesson uh, and we teach some basics we learn some basics and then when you go to real world uh, and do some uh, practical things, you, you learn that you need to learn more. Uh, so how do you go to this next advanced level? Um, so it's always not obvious how to integrate this into the carpentry materials themselves because they will get more advanced and uh, it, it doesn't suit the purpose. Um, uh, and in addition uh, to teach certain advanced um, uh, topics, you need some uh, hands-on experience. That will be the same case we, I, I will assume in HPC as well. So the basic HPC, anybody can uh, follow the material and uh, teach, teach it. But uh, to get, when you come to some advanced topics, you might need some um, people more involved day in, uh, who lose HPC day to day. Uh, so in this context, uh, Code Refinery has evolved as a, as a separate project. Uh, so we'd also like to um, get involved in the HPC uh, as well. Um, uh, and in, in addition, um, what I would like to say is, um, so this is 
totally inspired by pa carpentry and following all the carpentry lessons, but as a medium to advanced level, sort of next level to carpentry. Um, that's all I want to present. The slides are there and I'm, I'm available for any questions if, you, if there are any. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Sabri. Uh, any questions or comments for Sabri? So um, I believe we've linked them um, to, to the group in Code Refinery created a lot of content, um, which is something we still have to go through as well and think about how do we how do we leverage that or how do we how do we work together right so that so that people are aware that this content exists and I think it's something we have to think about in the future as well. Um, okay, if there's if there's no comments or questions, then we can move on to the next. Um, uh, lightning presentation that is uh, where am I that is David David Henty from Edinburgh and um, talking about um, running HVC carpentry online recent experiences hi so um, can, is that working okay yep we can see it fine great so I so said I'm um, come quite late to the party. My major, the involvement from EPCC side with HP carpentry has been through Andy Turner. Um, but um, we ran, I ran um, an HPC carpentry recently, first time I'd run a carpentry course myself, and also it was online because of the current situation. I thought I'd reflect on, on how that went. So the background is uh, we're running the next UK national supercomputer. We run the current one called Archer, it's going to be called Archer 2. Part of that involves, um, it'll be in by the end of 2020, should have been earlier, but obviously uh, getting the machine installed from America is different at the difficult at the moment. It'll be about 25 petaflops, but we have a training plan and carpentries courses, software, data, and HPC carpentry are all key to that because we've recognized, it's become obvious over the past service that the majority of users are not developers. They need support um, in using the machines, but they, they don't need programming courses so much. Uh, they're not running, they're not developing their own parallel packages, mostly, obviously some. So I ran a two-day HPC carpentry online. Uh, we did it through Blackboard Collaborate. It's just the system we have used at the University of Edinburgh. It's just like Zoom, really. Uh, we ran HPC Shell the first day and HPC Intro the next day. Um, third time EPC has run this course, uh, but the previous one's been done by, by um, Andy and my colleague Juan. Um, and the first time I've done it, but all the uh, all the material, including the videos and such like, are available at that at the website. So we did video it and put it all up online. So that's hopefully useful to people. How did it go? Well, um, unfortunately, there were a lot of teething problems logging in because uh, with recent security, the, the the worldwide HPC hacking incidents, we had to put in an enhanced security now, which means that people have to upload an SSH key to a central web server, and it's a bit of a nightmare. That was a one-off. But that did uh, cause us pain. But I had two or three colleagues along, Juan and another couple of people, who through screen sharing and breakout rooms were able to solve the problems generally. I think there was only one user that really couldn't get on. And that was because they were actually an existing user, which has actually made things more complicated. Um, I was concerned about lack of interactivity. Overall, that was good. There's a little chat boards. The, the chat window was heavily used. Um, we used the Etherpad, and that was good for more you know, can you introduce yourself? What's your interest in the course? You know, a few paragraphs of stuff. And I used a few little simple polls, multiple choice questions, which you can just do in line and collaborate to, to break up the talks. But I said that the, the, the one thing I got was it's much harder to get a feeling for how the class is doing as a whole. And that's difficult to get that feeling of generally, how is it going? Are people engaging? Are people going forward? That was, that's a bit more difficult because you can't just walk around or chat to people at coffee breaks, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, general comments, as I said, this is my, I've actually been active in HPC training for, for too long, over 25 years. Our first machine installed 25 years ago was 40 gigaflops. It's, it's, it's of order a millionth for the performance of our new machine. But surprisingly, the major conceptual issues with HPC are the same. You know, uh, uh, the way you logged on and programmed HPC machines 25 years ago is largely the same as you do today. Other than multi-core nodes have been the really only conceptual change. So I'm very keen that HPC Carpentry focuses on, and I think it does, core concepts, you know, 
don't just say here's some slur magic but say this is what a batch scheduler is this is why you need it this is what it does for you this is what you need to tell it and by the way this is how you do it in slur and i think that is the setup but that was that was very pleasing for me um and i think it generally went very well i'll just show you some of the material so uh that's our hpc carpentry i uh, know it's not that's the hpc carpentry page where people registered and we we have links to the material but we also have up all the videos um i think they just hosted on youtube the only work I did contribute, um, it's actually to a local repo, but hopefully this is a candidate for going upstream. Uh, Andy Turner has done a lot of work to involve, to, to set up a parallel example for the final day. So I use this sharpen example that I've used for many years, which takes a, a fuzzy image and produces a sharp image, and it's written to illustrate Amdahl's law, um, and, and to be quite a fun program, hopefully, and you see some output. And so as part of the lesson, for example, people were asked to, 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 to run the benchmark, to fill in some run times. And we, we had some selected run times here. You can see time, um, never plot time. Uh, you should plot parallel speed up and efficiency. And, and you can see that if you do that with this example, you get you know, curves that look like Amdahl's law, um, you know, scaling curves which are, which are useful and, and can, can be understood. So we didn't want just, we set this up as a software module so people just had to do module load sharpen as if it were a proper package like Romax, which it isn't. Then they could run it and it's designed to give performance characteristics which are hopefully representative of real code, although it's a very, it's a very, very semi-trivial code. But I enjoyed running it and I would say, I mentioned this in the breakout session last time, Running these courses online has its challenges, but one of the great things is it's a very low barrier to overhead, a very low overhead to entry. People don't have to spend hundreds of euros or dollars on train tickets and give up two days of their life and make childcare arrangements with their partners to come to a course. They can just turn up and if they don't like it after the first hour, they can go off and go back with their lives. So, it, you know, I think it's a very, although it has its challenges in terms of opening up to new users, I think it's, it's the online has, has a lot of advantages. Okay, great. Um, thanks, David. Any questions or comments for David? So one one comment will be please include a link to those uh, material in the interpad so we could have a look. Thank you. Yes, already done so. Uh, I, I have one question, David. So so you said it was obvious that we have more users than developers and did you did you quantify that so it's an issue well, we've, I been think about the Archer, we've been running the archer service for five years now i think we just look at um you know the most well in terms of cpu usage most cpu usage is dominated by in the uk is dominated by people running uh, a relatively small number of materials modeling packages you know um yeah cp2k gromax basp CPMD, um, that and 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 some some engineering packages, and so the vast majority of the CPU cycles that are used are are, are are consumed in the UK by people running standard packages, and of course they're not trivial anymore. They're not need to know to run a package well, but they're not running their own parallel codes. The main production work is not done with codes that they parallelize themselves with MPI or OpenMP. They're centrally developed and and also centrally installed by us as often. Yeah, I know. I know that some sites do collect this kind of information about the usage patterns on the machine, and some sites like ours don't do it in Ulic uh, because of they're concerned about privacy stuff. So the privacy laws are pretty strong in Germany, and so they don't actually collect this on purpose. Um, yes, yeah, so we anonymize it all. Pity. We do. We do collect. There is an intercept which just logs how many times packages are run. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, any, any other question? There is a hand up uh, by Andrew. Yeah. Um, so this is for David. Um, I'm curious if you had any uh, feedback on like what are good platforms. So I'm at a U.S. government lab. We're not allowed to use Zoom. Uh, I recently attended an online conference that uses Crowdcast, and it went extremely well. Uh, what platform did you use, and um, uh, how many platforms did you explore, and how did it go? Well, we use Blackboard Collaborate, and the reason is that that's centrally supported by the university, and we use it for our on-campus. Well, we use it day-to-day -day for, for teaching. So that's why we like to use it, just to keep it you know, down to one, you know, one platform. So it's because it was supported by the university and centrally managed that we, uh, 
that we use it. It's it's okay. It's fine. It doesn't do anything amazing, but it, it has breakout rooms that are a bit clunky, but they work. So we didn't actually experiment a lot because we, we wanted to go with a centrally supported and maintained service, and we're lucky that's done by the university here. All right. Thanks. Um, sorry, I'm drilling in my building here. I hope it's not upsetting the call. Uh, the next talk up is, is Trevor with some updates to the HPC intro lesson that, that have been going on recently. So Trevor, over to you. Okay. Uh, can folks see my screen? Yep. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to quickly update uh, everybody about some recent updates to the HPC intro uh, lesson, uh, kind of back end. Um, <clears throat> So there's been a fair amount of community activity. Uh, just looking at the, the forks on GitHub, there have been 66 forks of the HPC intro lesson. Uh, most of them are dormant, meaning somebody uh, forked it a few years ago and it hasn't been kept up to date or modified in any way. Uh, but there are 11 exceptions. So two folks uh, translated the lesson, a, a very old lesson, but nonetheless into Portuguese and Korean. Um, two universities um, went through manually and changed the, the lesson to fit their, their installation site or their clusters. Um, and then seven places, uh, universities, labs, and a cancer center have um, made use of the recent templating efforts to uh, port the code or the lesson to their, their sites. Um, there are very few uh, push requests back up to our the original HPC intro repository. Uh, something that I, I hope people keep in mind and we can discuss later is what obstacles you might have encountered in thinking about or actually working through that process. And so the, the thing that I spend most of my time and effort working on is how to make it easier to adopt, maintain, and contribute to this code base. Um, so, one of the big things, um, so when you start the lesson, uh, you one of the early exercises is something like this, where you run a script to, um, so on the landing pad to spit out the, the host name. And so kind of the first time you look at this, you see this GRA login one, well, that's not the name of my landing pad. What a tedious nightmare it must be to go through and change all of those by hand. Um, that's probably too much work and I don't really want to do it. Uh, fortunately, thanks to a, a heroic effort by Andy Turner, um, we use Jekyll variables uh, in the, the markdown uh, of the, the episodes in the HPC intro code um, to use variables like site.remote.prompt uh, to give you a bash prompt and site.remote.host to print the host name anywhere in the Markdown Lessons um, code that, that you see these things. And so by, um, so this is the code that you, you don't actually have to modify this code directly. Um, you can set a config file. Um, so in the underscore config.yml, um, so the GRA login is set as this, um, so, so Jekyll, uh, any anything that you set in this config.yaml, uh, you can call by site dot and then variable name. So site dot remote dot host gives you the GRA login one uh, landing pad node name uh, from the Compute Canada Gram cluster. Um, you can set your uh, location or host university. You set your command prompt for your remote server. Uh, you can also set or customize what you think your local user might see as the prompt on their laptop using site.local.prompt um, versus site.remote.prompt. And then you can modify uh, scheduler details. Uh, so site.sched.name, you can switch between Slurm, PBS, Torq, Condor, uh, whatever. Um, we only have, well, get into that later. Um, so you can set an example username, um, and then details for how what commands are issued to submit jobs, etc. cetera. Um, so you set your, configure your settings in this one file and they propagate to almost all the rest of the lesson. Unfortunately, some things can't be, I mean, they can be templated, but 
the the config.yaml file would get rather busy if we tried to include everything. Uh, so something like when you, so this bash command, um, your site.remote.login, doing your gram login one, uh, you can run the sinfo command. That input command can be templated completely, but the output from it is going to vary dramatically by from site to site and have quite a bit of output, which doesn't neatly fit into a single file. So for this, we have a snippet library. So down below, uh, you can see I've run cat on episode 12 slash info dot snip, and that contains all of the content for this uh, output text box. Um, so this is arranged as, so you have the config.yaml, and then what we call a snippet library containing um, the more verbose or long form boxes to include. And this can also be useful if we have a callout box that is supported by, say, Slurm, but not supported by PBS. Um, we can write the Slurm content in its own snippet file and choose to include it or not based on the scheduler. So the snippet library helps this quite a bit. Um, but then the naming scheme can be confusing. So you can see on the left, we have the original snippets as they are at the moment. So episode 12 has two snippets. Um, episode 13 has quite a few more there. So at a glance, the naming scheme is kind of confusing and jarring. Uh, I find it confusing and jarring, which is why I just submitted a pull request on the right to rename these to be a little bit more verbose and uh, spent some time making things a little bit confusing to any brain that's not mine. But the goal is to make the lessons proceed through the snippets in roughly alphabetical order. So originally, the um, episode 12 snippet library had explore first and info second. But in the lesson, the info.snip gets included before the explore, uh, which makes it I mean, not so complicated when there are only two files. But in like episode 13, finding the specific snippet that you're supposed to edit for your site can get pretty tedious. Um, so now I'm hoping that the new naming scheme will help uh, everyone navigate these snippet library directories. And the goal is that you can copy an existing snippet library that uses Slurm, PBS, or implement your own for an alternative queuing system, um, customize these snippet files for your site with the correct output, um, commit to the repository and use it for your local uh, HPC intro lesson and hopefully push it back upstream so that we have a growing library of snippets that show customizations for a lot of different um, well-used queuing systems and sort of niche or corner cases. Um, so Another nightmare or headache has been staying in sync with the Carpentry's theme and style. Um, I'm happy to say that that's mostly in the past because the Carpentry's has been working on a remote theme. So if you host your, well, if you build your site locally or uh, build it with uh, Jekyll using uh, Ruby gem bundler, um, you can use a remote um, Jekyll theme. So we've been able to remove the assets folder and the layouts folders entirely and all of their content. Um, so the, the top local theme is the, the original version of the, the website contents. The second one is the revi revised contents with the re using the remote theme. Um, some modifications were required for config.yaml and a lot of files disappeared from the includes folder, but not all of them. And we had to add a gem file um, but the gem file is fairly trivial. It's two lines that tell Jekyll to use a remote theme. Um, and then in config.yaml, you just add this remote theme, carpentries slash carpentries theme to the end, and it pulls in the carpentries theme instead of making us haul that code around with us. So it slims down the repository uh, quite a lot and makes it much easier to maintain going forward. Uh, David Perez Suarez, um, it helpfully tipped me off that this was possible. And he's been contributing to the Carpentries internationalization effort, which is exciting to see. And I'm looking forward to merging some of that content into our repositories. Uh, so we could use help. And uh, based on what Elizabeth said, we need help moving forward um, and commitments in a big way. So if you haven't in a while, please read through the lesson. 
uh, if you see something that bothers you or doesn't quite fit or could be worded better, file an issue or a pull request would be even better. Uh, speaking of PRs, we need people to review pull requests um, to get these through in a timely fashion. You don't need to be especially familiar or all that familiar with Git to become a, a pull request reviewer. Uh, you just, if you can read the markdown code, you can contribute or you can learn on the job. Um, and this is especially crucial going forward um, as we migrate a lot of these changes and start working on uh, the HPC shell, Python, and Chapel lessons. That's all I have. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Trevor. Any, any questions for Trevor? Could I ask a quick question? Yeah, go ahead. So I, 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 luckily I had access to Andy Turner, to, so I, I found the, the template templating very useful. But I did find that for me, a couple of minute delay in, 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 in producing the web page, an absolute killer for development until Andy gave me a secret incantation to run something locally so it refreshed instantaneously. Because when you're writing about layouts and stuff, you know, a minute or two delay from editing to seeing it is, um, is a complete killer. Um, you know, you, you miss a character turn or you, you, you mess up the, the markdown and, you know, you waste minutes. Whereas the instant, and there is an easy way of doing that. So that, 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 um, that I find extremely useful when he gave me the hack to do that. Yeah, so we should uh, codify and capture that that hack in the documentation. I thought I had, but I will go back and triple check. Uh, Andrew Reed and I have been going through this exercise for our local cluster. Um, and we both had, so I had everything running perfectly, humming along on my desktop, and then went over to my laptop, which has a webcam and a microphone. Um, and nothing, <laughs> nothing worked. <laughs> so use RVM to install uh, the Ruby gem and bundler, and then uh, bundle install and bundle exec Jekyll serve, which should get into the, the readme stuff. But yeah, so you can use the, the Ruby built-in uh, package manager to pull in the dependencies to build the site and then run it locally so you can quickly iterate. I know that might seem daunting, um, for people who are new to the process, but uh, as David mentioned, yeah, it really helps uh, speed up that development loop. And uh, it's nice being able to just spot check the website before you push it. Um, yeah. Totally agree. Saved me a lot of time recently as well. <laughs> um, okay, any other questions for Trevor? If not, then we're actually right on time to start the breakout room session. Um, just to mention, I already sent it in the chat, but it's probably gone far up. There's a shared document where you're able to see the, let me click back in the chat now, where you're able to see um, the results from the poll. So there's about 30, there's a 30, just 30 responses in there. It's back in the chat again. Um, and take a quick look at that as Peter will move you over to the breakout rooms. Peter, maybe you just want to tell people what's going to happen now. Yeah, okay, cool. So looks like we only lost a few, um, but that's fine. Um, so let's, I propose that we'll dive into it and I'll ask Alan to take the stage and report from breakout room one. Okay, so our theme was about motivation. So how do we, why are people interested and what we can do to, to foster, maintain and expand that interest. Um, there was four of us in the room and I was hopefully there just as a facilitator, although I always talk too much. Um, and so uh, one of the participants was saying about how they work in, uh, in a cancer research institute. Uh, they use lots of AI and scientific computing. Um, they're surrounded by lots of biologists and they want to teach them the advantages of HPC. So the type of material that's offered by software carpentry is very interesting for that reason because it's aimed at a very novice level. Um, which is the kind of people that they might run into. Um, and they definitely want to deliver the courses that we have here. So we raised the issue about whether they might be interested in contributing back. And of course, that's one of these things where they talk about, we would have to clear that with the Institute, right? So if they want to spend work time and actually contributing back to lessons, then that's something that has to be approved. And um, so one of the things I mentioned was perhaps people could consider reporting back if they give the material and how the course went and things like that, because what we haven't been collecting to now is, is that kind of information about how often the material is actually used. Or if we were proactive, perhaps that might help show people that 
this material is being used by, by quite a lot of people. So that might be a good way of, of doing that. Um, then the other, uh, one of the other participants was uh, say that they want to use the, they want to use the courses. They want to support people to run courses in general themselves. So as an HPC site, they're willing to offer resources and they're willing to show people that these lessons exist and they're there and they can take them away um, and they'll give them the resources to, to actually run the lesson themselves. And a lot of people are willing to do that. So they say that because it has the carpentry's label attached to it, people are very open to that idea of, of taking the lesson away and giving it, knowing that it's very modular, right? So that they can take this lesson away and know that the, the material is, is there, it's reasonable, and that they'll be able to do that in a set amount of time. Um, so they, they currently have a fork of the material, but they are interested in, in, in pushing back up any changes that they've made back upstream. And they hope to do that pretty soon. And they said that the template can be a little bit challenging at times. So getting, getting used to the templating in the material can be challenging. Um, and there was probably a well-founded fear that, the, that this templating might explode in the short term. So that we might have an awful lot of templating, which would make tuning the lesson quite, quite, quite consuming. And there was the fear that if it's really hard, if it takes a lot of time to tune the lesson, people will drop the templating and just replace the content, right? So, so drop out the template. Anyway, what, what we said was hopefully that this would actually settle down. So we'll find ways, good ways of reducing the templating as much as possible. Um, this was in, they were in the UK. So they said, actually, it's a bit unusual, but the, the UK machine doesn't have any GPUs, which is probably going to be unusual. So in some sense, they're a little bit perhaps different to a lot of sites you might see these days, but well, there's GPUs everywhere or accelerators at least, the more of those coming. Um, there was also a participant who was relatively new to the carpentries and was concerned that maybe they have themselves a little bit of expert, expert bias. They wanted, to know, they wanted to know if we measure or if there's, how can we be sure of the effectiveness of the classes and, and, and in terms of what people do afterwards how well are those lessons actually adopted by people? And so there was this typical example of where people get hand-me-down scripts. Um, so they, they, get, they get submission files that they get from somebody else and they never touch them and they work and that's fine. But you have cases where there's been an update on the machine and where there used to be 24 cores, now there's 48 and people never change the submission file and just waste half the machine. It happens, right? It happens a lot, especially when you get a new machine. Um, so, uh, of course, well, it's difficult to gather that kind of information, but just this uptake as well. Like, so, so it's the stuff that we teach, how, how effective is it? Do people really take it on board? And I think it comes back to that understanding thing as well. So trying to, trying to, push, trying to push understanding on people or, or to help them to understand things. Um, yeah, there was a, this talk, discussion about performance as well. So having a good example of performance to show people how to conserve resources, to show them that, you know, maybe if you use half the CPUs, you might get, it might take the same amount of time. Um, and to, 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 to help them to see these kind of things or to do those kinds of experiments for themselves. Uh, and then the last thing was, is that the small things can help people. So sometimes people are really appreciative if you, if you fix their laptop, Somehow, if you if you give them an environment, if you fix something in the, the laptop that makes it a nicer environment for them to work in, they can be very grateful for that. And so in, a, in, a, in, the, in respect of HPC carpentry, it might be things like teaching them how to manage files on, a, on an HPC system. So some, some small things like that, they might be very grateful for. Um, and I think that was basically it. Cool. In the interest of time, um, let's give the word to Trevor for room two. OK, uh, I hope that we can circle back to the concept of templating exploding in the near term. I feel attacked. Anyway, um, so breakout room two, we were discussing what can the HPC carpentry community do to make using HPC resources easier and what barriers are there getting in the way? Um, so we had some uh, some commentary about um, basically small clusters, um, this being a common issue, uh, having a small cluster without much funding or personnel resources to run training. So having the HPC carpentries available to sort of offload or point uh, newcomers to um, is really great. Uh, a follow-up question was, uh, how are you going to present that material? Do you intend to teach it or just literally point people 
and say, go look at these things or have videos. And sort of the overwhelming response was that teaching uh, in person, whether that's virtual or uh, live, um, is a crucial part of this. I mean, this is the Carpentries lesson where the in-person uh, teaching experience is part and parcel to actually getting the most out of the, the content. So definitely teaching that even though, so basically offloading curriculum development to the open source international community, but taking local responsibility for teaching it and reaching out to new users and even some experienced users is important. Um, so, there are challenges uh, similarly for experienced users who end up being the, the, the one contact person that everybody asks for help. Um, we wanna sort of diversify that. Um, some issues that have cropped up are that there are some, some things that are kind of uh, tedious and not necessary in the lessons. So um, having that modularity where you can pick and choose uh, sort of a choose your own adventure thing, uh, pick and choose which lessons or episodes to include, or even making it more granular than that. So having sub episode modularity in terms of switching out components and having building, developing, and maintaining a large enough library of uh, really well thought out material to make that possible uh, is a, a great dream, uh, some, something to aspire to. Um, and um, People are using a lot more software, uh, some of which is packaged, some of which um, they're compiling themselves, but a lot of, so in the bio community in particular, I believe it was, um, a lot of these uh, software packages are packaged. Um, so pointing people to the right package manager, most, uh, so Conda has been really nice for this, or Open On Demand and Hugo, um, Jupyter Lab type things for supporting more narrowly scoped projects have been really nice. And there's a question of whether we as HPC um, admins need to start supporting all of these different package managers on these large cluster systems, uh, which would get kind of messy. Um, one idea was that if it's uh, neatly enough packaged that you can explain what it is and how to use it in like a one page crash course, then yeah, go ahead and support that. Otherwise it might be a bit much. Um, a lot of people are replacing uh, internal or outdated training courses and material with HPC Carpentries, which is great to see. Um, and Christina uh, proposed a really great idea, I thought, uh, which was a, a monthly meeting and knowledge share, not just not about the HPC Carpentry specifically, but sort of an overarching HPC community of practice where we can share ideas, mention things that we've been struggling with, or like these new packaging managers or like SPAC or um, Jupyter Hub, things like that, uh, where we can we can get experiences from other people who may have tried it or, hey, I heard about this new thing, um, comment, discuss. Um, and I think that would be really nice in terms of going moving forward with the HPC Carpentries, having an international community of practice to help us locally decide or think about what we should think about supporting and what kinds of new tutorials and lessons we need to build into the carpentries to just get some kind of a grasp on the ever-changing world of HPC uh, software, hardware, and practices. So that was our second breakout. Cool, thanks. Um, I'll dive into mine. Um, people that want to take notes, please feel free to do that because I cannot talk and type. Uh, at least not extensively. Um, so we had a discussion about what should we be teaching and where should we focus our next efforts. Um, so um, uh, it was pointed out that the structure of HPC intro is well received so far, um, but there needs to be some kind of um, half or full step in advance to um, teach people um, more advanced uh, concepts in a way that how do I go from here? So that they're pointed at uh, other materials that uh, go beyond the introduction solely. Um, um, it was mentioned that at some centers um, people exclusively use or mostly exclusively use third party applications. And for them, it's really also about concepts of how do I map the content that I was just taught um, uh, onto my application domain? And how do I now use an MPI enabled application. 
It was a nice idea um, brought forward um, that at uh, one center, um, learners are classified into th three classes. Um, so those people, for example, that only want to submit a job and just be done with it. Um, the others that are more advanced and, and write simple parallel applications uh, and want to submit them. And of course, those that are advanced and really um, mingle with the nitty gritty details of uh, weak or strong scaling and numerical issues and whatnot. And that the materials in that um, center are basically mapped onto these three classes. Um, uh, people commented that the site customization that we have in place is a really nice feature that Andy Turner ported over from HPC in a day um, into HPC intro. Um, uh, and then also one thing that was pointed out very um, uh, interestingly, which I completely support is that we need to uh, also differentiate people that need to use MPI from everybody else. Um, because the concept of MPI is so, um, yeah, tricky in a sense, if you're not used to it, that um, people that never use it um, might get um, basically cut off from the flow of the teaching. Um, GNU Parallel was mentioned as we have an issue on this as well. Um, um, yeah, and then uh, it was also discussed that uh, maybe HPC carpentry should only shed enough light on MPA, MPI and shared mem memory parallelization like OpenMP that is necessary. This ties back in the discussion we had previous uh, during the day that HPC carpentry potentially should only focus on an onboarding effort or onboarding materials, um, however you define uh, onboarding. Um, and then last but least, um, uh, it was just given as an idea on open question if we should tie our um, teaching goals into the HPC certification effort. Good, that was it. And I think in the interest of time, we we should move on to the summary. Um, Alan, do you want to go, go ahead? Alan? Okay. Um, I think we've had some interesting things to chew over both this morning and today. Um, what do we do next is kind of a question uh, that we need to address. We've already had a little chat today that we really should look at September as a time to talk about HPC carpentry and this issue that we raised of having um, task groups and GitHub managers and that we should have uh, a meeting to, 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 and we will contact all the people who are in this group to join, to invite them to this meeting to talk about, to ask for volunteers for that basically and move forward in these things. So it's to define these task groups and to define and to ask for volunteers to, to contribute to those as well. Um, overall, I think it's been a pretty interesting session for me uh, and there's a lot to consume there. And it's also been interesting about, I think, uh, how to, where to draw our borders um, where to say what the things are we are going to do are. And um, that's one that needs more discussion, I think, as well. But th th there's a lot to be talked about there. But I think it's an important one. We did this pretty well two years ago in the sense that we really focused on the HPC intro. So we talked about four hours. And now we're moving beyond that and maybe talking about up to maybe the next step is to talk about up to two days. So what do we do up to two days? Uh, and I think and to try and get that at the, at the same kind of level that we have for HPC intro. So I think that's something that's really interesting for me. Um, a lot of interesting stuff for, from, from different sites about how they do things. Also very interested in, in, in the idea of, of sharing experiences of all these fancy new tools that are out there and helping people to hopefully configure their sites and stuff better as well. There's a lot of, if you look at the responses to the survey, most of the people on, who come to these sessions actually work for HPC sites. And that's something we should also think about as well. Um, okay, and Peter, maybe you want to add a few comments there as well. Yeah, um, thanks to all for joining. Um, we, in, we will try to finish this lesson up until half past. One thing I would love to ask participants is to um, have a look at the wrap up uh, section of the etherpad. Um, there is a um, bullet saying uh, or stating staying connected. And beneath that we, um, we present to you a couple of um, URLs where you can sign up to stay connected. Most notably, the uh, mailing lists discuss-hpc. 
and the maintainers list is uh, maintainers my, uh, dash HPC um, in case you want to uh, start contributing. Um, there's also a uh, uh, Slack channel that we have to start using, at least uh, speaking for myself. But uh, most uh, importantly for me is that you put your plus one at the point, what do you prefer to use uh, in terms of media to exchange or to get uh, informed about um, recent events of, um, uh, of within HPC Carpentry. Something that was uh, basically mentioned this morning that um, following a GitHub repo is sometimes overwhelming because you get notified for well, every issue and a comment on that. Um, so maybe a monthly newsletter by mail may be the way forward. Um, or a plain mailing list as we have already in place is enough for people. Um, or you like to follow on Twitter or using a blog. Um, so feel free to, to please let us know and put a plus one um, behind the item that you would like to see. Um, um, yeah. Um, and then if you already know that um, you want to um, candidate for becoming part of the task force. Um, there is a dedicated uh, section down at the etherpad where you can put your name and your GitHub um, ID or your GitHub name and, and we'll get uh, onto you or back to you in due course. Um, so yeah, that's it from, from my side. Are there any, are there any um, major uh, questions um, going forward? Would you repeat again, please, where uh, if somebody is interested to joining a specific mailing list, where is that? In, is that in the either pad we have all been using? Sure, hang on. Uh, let me share my etherpad and I'll can, I can then point it out directly. Okay, so um, there we are. Uh, this is the wrap up session or the section, sorry. Um, and then down here, there, these are the links to, to get connected onto the mailing list on topic box. These are the two mailing lists I mentioned. I think if you just want to listen, discuss dash HPC is, is the way to go. And if you uh, want to or intend to become part into the task force, maybe the maintainers list is also something you want to join. Um, and then here's the vote that I mentioned, which uh, media channel or communication channel you think is most suitable for you please drop a plus one uh, to make to cast your vote. And then if you want to become part of the task force, this is here at the bottom. This is the um, uh, section where you please, uh, that I kindly ask you to put down your name and uh, email address. Um, yeah. I hope that helped. <laughs> and any other comments or anything for anyone before we, we close things down? Yeah, so if I can uh, yep. just comment, if people are having, I don't know, so I've been using Jekyll and Git and GitHub for long enough that I've become entrenched. <laughs> so the notion that people are struggling with these is, yeah, this is always a challenge. Uh, if you if you are adopting the material and have questions or comments or concerns, um, and they're not addressed, uh, either file an issue or please reach out to me directly uh, and I will try, do my best to, to guide you through that. So we might need to have an HPC Carpentry Carpentry for maintainers, um, <laughs> but uh, I'd be happy to give you either a, a crash course or take a look at your code if it's up on, on GitHub or any, any server um, if you're experiencing trouble. Um, the notion that people might um, ditch the templating and go back to uh, hard coding uh, site specific details is the stuff of nightmares. So uh, please, please help us straighten that out. Um, talk to us uh, if you have concerns about where it's going so we can um, sort of redirect or course correct. Um, and yeah, thanks for, thanks for being involved. Oh, and if you join the Discuss HPC or especially the Maintainers HPC mailing list, please send out a hello world message so we know that you're there and we can welcome you properly. So, okay. And unless anyone else wants to say something, I think we can say thanks very much. Uh, it's great to see so many people here. and uh, It's been interesting. And I think, yeah, it gives us something to chew on and hopefully we'll see more, more of the people who are in this room and in, in the room this morning at the, at the call that we have in September. That would be really great. 
and hopefully we'll see you there. We'll talk again soon and, and we'll move forward with everything like we intended. Cool. Stay tuned, yet, everyone. Thanks, all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.